so that he can get an introduction for that universe for life to be introduced in this that universe. That is correct. Well, let's see what Now we have are. a total of 10 to the 85th electrons, but we need time. How much time are we going to give him, Carl? They say in evolution that the age of the universe is approximately 5 times 10 to the 17th, 17th seconds. seconds. Let's give him 20 times that amount of time. Okay, let's talk in his favor. We now have 10 to the 19th seconds, and we're going to take these electrons, <clears throat> and in these electrons, we're going to consider each one a laboratory that can do a billion trials a second of trying to put these sugars and amino acids together. So in this amount of time, with this amount of electrons, we can now do 10 to the 113th trials per second. in a second. Oh, I like the fact that you're giving the naturalist, the evolutionist, I used to be an evolutionist, I like the fact that you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. So once again, let's make this clear to the audience. Let's make each of these electrons equivalent to a laboratory, 100 billion trials per second in all of these universes, that's 10 to the 113th power of trials every second. Let's see what the chance is. Well, here's our electron laboratory. Yes. And their little hands are putting these sugars and amino acids together. And it does it randomly, so sometimes it gets a right, sometimes it gets a left. We can only use the left here. We can only use, I'm sorry, the right here. We can only use a left-handed amino, another left-handed, and then a right. When it makes a mistake, it just simply starts over. But we have lots of laboratories starting over. Oh, yes. We can take off. Yes then the probability that we can form this one five sentence paragraph is 10 to the 113th divided by 10 to the 120th or one chance in 10 million to form a hundred rung paragraph just a single paragraph of a hundred rungs and what we're really needing is 10 is a thousand complete book volumes each associated and interrelated with the other. All right, let's, let's start this one in 10 million. You see, entropy, second law of thermodynamics, wrecked our gold coin. So we had to go back to a silver coin. Uh, let's start over with, a, with another probability chance. Okay, so we got the first one right. We, we got a heads. All right, let's start on this one chance. And uh, we got two heads in a row. We're I mean, we're, we're on a start. roll. We're going to create life. In a test tube, three in a row. We're going to create life. Uh oh, tails. Have to start all start over, over, over again. Okay, take it beyond that, please. When Miller did his experiment, the experiment I actually consider a very good experiment, uh, experiment in science. It was creative. Certainly, it was a thing a scientist should do. What we find, though, is how this experiment is then carried in the textbooks. And here's where we find some of the poorest science, because yes. withheld from the public is the fact that in that experiment, 50% were left-handed, 50% were right-handed amino Can you acids. Say that again, withheld from the public. And now there's a move to withhold that from the students studying science. That's right. Take it from there, please. What we call that is selective scientific uh, withholding of data. Yes. It's, censorship it's censorship of its ugliest form. And this is what happens in this experiment. When you look at textbooks, you never find the word chorality. You never find it. Uh, you never see them talk about right-handedness and left-handedness. These are simple facts of science that yes. chemists know about, but they withhold that from the public, and they want to continue to do that. And chorality, again, has to do with this left-handedness or right-handedness, but it is held again, not only from the public, has been withheld from the very uh, experiments in the 1950s to the current instruction. Now, we have only moments left. Would you tell us the minimal requirement for a cell? If you ask one of these people who are telling us this can happen, there are 10 steps that are minimum for a cell. These are never discussed in the books. Let's mention them quickly in closing. An enclosed membrane that we worked on, internal membranes or additional rooms or envelopes, natural raw materials for growth that have to be imported, outside power source that has to be imposed, power conservation to operate the cell, power storage, management system, and that's where you're, you specialize, transportation system of raw materials in to feed the cell, transportation system of products, transportation 
system of waste out, detection system and a repair system, duplication system. Pete, you've got to have not only the DNA and that thousand volumes all interrelated making sense, but all of these systems together. Well, what are the chances that that could occur? Absolutely nil. We would go as far to say as zero. Zero. Now, in closing the program, let's step back to what is not only probable, but scientifically mandated. These living systems require a creator. Design requires a designer. We've seen that randomness, evolutionary processes, cannot produce the single envelope, let alone the mechanism inside that beautiful living system we call the cell. Only life, the law of biogenesis is that only life creates life. We have here a symbol of the earth and all its systems and the supporting cast, the orchestration of the entire universe with seven shells or envelopes of galaxies and stars feeding information. All of this required a designer. You can know that designer. His name is Jesus. Would you pray this simple prayer? Just pray it from your heart. Lord Jesus, thank you for creating the universe and the world and in time creating me. Thank you for dying for me. I'm a sinner. I need you. Thank you for rising from the dead after your burial. Right now, I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, right now, step into my heart and live. I claim you as my personal Savior, and I commit to you to live for you with all my heart. If you prayed that prayer, welcome home to real science. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.